Tom Robinson, Broken Records. Broken Records, Tom Robinson. We all have people in our lives who really push our buttons. Maybe a few whose buttons we occasionally push. We mature, we grow wiser, we develop strategies for protecting our buttons, we defend our buttons, we avoid people and situations who may try to push our buttons. But still, some people push our buttons. The button pushers in our lives often are the people that we have known the longest, the people we're closest to. Even though we know what they're going to say, even though we plan our response, we have the same conversations over and over again. Like we're human jukeboxes. They press this button, we play this record. They push that button, we play that record. Tonight, let's break some records. Tonight, you will discover that behind our jukebox machinery, beyond the buttons, miracles await us. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow jukeboxes, we all know that kids love pushing buttons, and teens are master button pushers. But so were parents. I'm 13, surly, in the kitchen, button sparring with my mom. She's recently divorced, short-tempered and not in the mood. She shuts me down with a button bomb to the chest. Patented mommy move, you're just like your father! Fun fact, my mom wasn't a big fan of my dad at the time, and when she said that, <laughs> it was not a compliment. Every time she pressed that button, every time she said, you're just like your father, my stomach tightened up, my body shook, I shut down, and slinked off. For years, that's how all of our conversations ended. But I matured. I grew wiser. I developed a strategy for defending that button. That's right. I went to college. <laughs> Spent several years living in a different state from my mom. Practiced meditation. Deep breathing. And little by little, with a lot of effort, I got better at separating from that jukebox machinery. Got to the point where when my mom and I got together and she inevitably said, you're just like your father, my stomach tightened less. My body shook less. Instead of shutting down and slinking off, I just left. And sometimes that's enough. We suppress our automatic responses for the sake of our sanity or to maintain harmony in family situations. But what if we want more? Shortly after college, I was dreading a trip. I was going to spend several days with my mom. I knew how it was going to go. Not well. <laughs> and I was sharing my trepidation with a friend of mine. We had a brief conversation, and she asked me a question that I'll never get over. She said, what if you have no idea who your mom is really? At first I thought, wow. That's a really dumb question. I've literally known my mom my whole life. I know who my mom is. She challenged me for this trip. Engage with that question. What if you have no idea who your mom is really? And I did. At the time, my mom was the clinical director at an Arkansas State Correctional Facility. <laughs> this is not an easy, stress-free job. And I got to her house just as she was getting home from a particularly gnarly day in prison. We started with pleasantries, short order, she's nitpicking, I'm defending, we're button sparring again. And I saw it happen, as if in slow motion. You're just like your father. And I heard my friend's voice in the back of my head. What if you have no idea who your mom is really? And I got curious. 
And for the first time, I didn't resist or defend her communication. And the weirdest thing happened. Nothing happened. My stomach didn't tighten. My body didn't shake. I was fully present with my mom for the first time in years. And we had a new conversation. And she said things that were hard for me to hear. But I stayed curious. And I was able to hear not only everything that she said, but what was behind what she said that I'd never heard before. I could hear her anxiety about what sort of man I'd turn out to be. I could hear her fear about what kind of mother she was. And I discovered that in defending my buttons, protecting my buttons, I'd cut myself off from my mom. And I'd stop letting her know who I am. I, I didn't shut down. I didn't slink off. I was fully present with my mom. And when I was able to hear everything that she had to say without resist resisting, without defending, a miracle occurred. Who I was for my mom transformed. No longer a petulant child that she has to worry about. Who she was for herself transformed. She's no longer a failure as a mother. And who I am for myself transformed as I discovered the me behind the jukebox machinery. That button disappeared. That record broke. I didn't appreciate the profundity of this experience until about a year later. My mom and I went on a 14-hour road trip together. In itself, a miracle. We talked about myriad things I never imagined I would talk about with my mother. <laughs> a couple hours in, she turned to me and said, you know, you used to be so much like your father. It's over a decade ago. She hasn't once since said, you're just like your father. So when you look out at the button pushers in your life, I invite you to consider that you have no idea who they are really. That includes you. Get curious, listen newly, and discover your own miracles.